Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be going through my foundations um, and just kind of talking through my collection and then reflecting on it. This is the second part of the series going through my collection in order to just try and be a bit more thoughtful in my consumption. Um, but yeah, we're just going to start off today here with foundations and wanted to give a quick intro before I hopped into it. Alright, let's get into it. Okay, so the first foundation I have here is the L'Oreal Age Perfect Serum Foundation. I think it is the best foundation I've ever used. I bought it originally off of recommendation by Daisy Cash, and I've kind of just fallen in love with it since. It's, I think it's definitely my favorite foundation I have in my collection. It looks so good on the skin. It has a good enough coverage, and it lasts. I always wear it on nights out or when I'm going to like an event or something I think it's just like the most dependable foundation um, and I can't recommend it enough I will definitely be repurchasing this I think it's a great one to have in my collection all right the next one I have is the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte Foundation this is probably the oldest foundation I have in my collection it's kind of crazy to think about but I bought this and used it probably in my last couple of years of high school, first years of college. I feel like it's kind of a dated formula, and I mostly have this in my collection now just in case um, the trends kind of change and I want to get back into a matte foundation. It's honestly so old at this point, though. I should test it out and try it again, but I don't know. Sometimes it's just nice to have some things in your collection that you can kind of revisit for when the trends change. So that's kind of the thought with this, but definitely need to check it out and make sure it's still good. The next foundation I have is the e.l.f. Flawless Finish Foundation. Um, this is a great foundation. I've kind of like been surprised by how much I like it. Um, because it's so affordable and I feel like you never hear people talk about it. I think I probably heard about this from Kelly Gooch, but I think this is like just a great like classic foundation. I think I've kind of fallen, I've enjoyed rotating it in and out of my daily use. It's not necessarily something I'm always in the mood to use. I feel like it feels very foundation-y sometimes, but it has a beautiful like kind of glowy finish while having great coverage and I really do enjoy it. I think it's one of the top foundations in my collection, especially given its price. Um, so I definitely think it's worth trying. I enjoy having it. It's not one I'm like currently in love with, but I know I'll probably, you know, get back into it in a couple months because that's how it really works with me. Okay, next foundation is kind of a newer one. This is the Revlon Skin Tint from the Illuminance line. I think this is a great um, sort of skin tint. I bought this off the recommendation of, I believe, Jen Phelps. It's not, like, the cheapest, but no drugstore makeup is at this point. Um, but I really enjoy this because I feel like it's a tint. It's a light coverage foundation. It's easy to put on, but it's not super glowy. Um, someone who's, like, combo skin, things that are, like, absurdly luminous and glowy can really just make me look oily and sweaty at the end of the day, so, um, that's kind of something that I really appreciate about this. It can be a bit finicky, so I feel like it's a product I need to like work with a bit more and figure out what makes it look the way it does. Um, Cause sometimes it looks amazing and then sometimes I notice it like catching on my skin. So gotta figure out the right prep to use, but this is something I have in my like daily bin. I think it's fun to use and really good for just like daily use where I don't wanna think too much about it. This next foundation is my newest one. I bought this in the new year. It is the new CoverGirl Skin Tint Foundation, whatever it may be. It is obviously a dupe for the um, Chanel foundation or Rose Ink foundation with the same sort of suspended pigments. And honestly, all I have to say, I don't understand why I bought it. I think I was so intrigued by the dupe aspect of it because I do own the Chanel foundation. That will be the next one. But I do not like the Chanel foundation, so I don't really know what I was expecting with this. Um, they're very similar. Uh, I do think I enjoy maybe the CoverGirl one better, so I need to compare between them, but I think the CoverGirl is a little less fragranced and has like a finish that's a bit less, like makes me feel less greasy. Um, 
but yeah, it's funny I have this because this is so expensive, um, especially for drugstore. I think it was like 20 something dollars. So I don't know why I bought it. Waste of money. <laughs> so then the next phone chain I have is the Chanel Le Beige Eau de Ton. I don't really know how to say that at all. Um, I bought this. I kind of want to win. This was really not the smartest purchase. Um, but I think I was entranced by the kind of funky little formula and the fact it was Chanel. I had a gift card. I was like, why not? Obviously, these are kind of meant to be dupes. Um, has that suspended pigment. Again, I don't really like this foundation. I feel like it feels greasy and like it never really sets down. And it gets, it has like a, it gets caught on my skin. But I do think it's something I want to keep trying. Obviously, the cost, I think, you know, makes me want to do that because this is not like a negligible cost. But, um,. It's something I hear such great things about, especially from YouTubers I really like, love, and trust and have similar tastes to. So I want to keep trying it. That's why it's in the collection. Um, if it worked for me, like it would be a beautiful like light coverage foundation, but there are some issues with it. So that's my thoughts on that, but still in the collection at the moment. Would definitely want to compare those two. Alright, next foundation, another old classic. This is the Bare Minerals, um, I don't know, mineral foundation bought this off another um reviewer i love shelby wilson i got this on sale so it's like a jumbo um package in like this holiday packaging but i don't know if you can tell i have used up like none of this despite the fact i've had this for a couple of years but i enjoy this foundation i think it's something i'm not i still feel like i need to like use more and really figure out how to perfect it because when it looks good it looks great but sometimes I apply it a little off and I'm like, mm, didn't come together today. But it's like such a huge package. <laughs> I have so much left. Another thing I actually do like using with this, which is funny, or using this for, is as a concealer. So when you have just like something you cannot cover up, like I'll take a small dense brush and just kind of swirl it around and pack that on. It makes a great concealer. So this is kind of something I really enjoyed having in my collection. I think a powder foundation is underrated and great, and I love Bare Minerals. It's like the OG brand, so I enjoy this. It's a fun thing to have. Next up, we have another classic, the MAC Face and Body Foundation. I think this is such a good foundation, and just like another classic I feel like you need to have. This is the OG, like, light um, tint. It's not going to mattify at all. It's going to be glowy. It's going to make your skin look amazing. Um, and I feel like this is a foundation I want to try mixing with more things because I think it would make a lot of these foundations look better. Um, but yeah, I'm actually almost out of this, which is crazy. I've almost used it up, but I've had it for so long, so. But I really enjoy having this in my collection. It makes me a little greasy, but it's such a good finish that you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do, you know? Next up, we have the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation, another, like, old YouTube OG classic. Um, I bought this on the Ulta, I think it was, like, what, 20 Days of Beauty sale, where this was 50% off. This is such an old-school product that I remember when I saw it was on the sale, I was like, ugh, like, I do not want this foundation. It's going to look so cakey and full coverage. Like, it's so 2016, um youtube makeup um but i saw a review by jen phelps and she spoke so highly of it it was like you know full coverage but really looks good on the skin light fluid whatever so i picked it up and let me tell you i love it this is one of my top foundations it is full coverage it's going to be an intense coverage but it looks i mean i don't think you can find another foundation that still looks so natural um, despite having that coverage, so I think it's a great one to have in my collection. I use it a lot when I'm, you know, going out, struggling with my skin, what have you. It just looks great. It really is, and I, I'm a huge fan of it. I'm so happy I got it on sale because it made it a bit more of a reasonable price, but definitely an essential in my collection. Alright, the last foundation, perhaps the most expensive one, the most excessive one, is the Chantecai future skin foundation actually it's not future skin it's the serum foundation whatever you know what it is this is like 89 dollars um side fact i got this on the app flip um so 
bit of a referral scheme, but I got it for like 30 bucks because of that, so it didn't feel that excessive, but guys, this is probably my favorite foundation in my collection. It is the perfect tint, light coverage, perfecting foundation, and it's a tint, and it's beautiful in the skin. It looks like nothing, but it doesn't make me look crazy, which is so unique. That is what I was looking for with so many of these other options of tints in my collection, and this is really the only one that achieves it. It's $89, it's excessive, but I would buy it again. Um, I really do love it that much. I think it's so good. Um, not for everyone, of course. I think like excessive spending like that can be crazy, but I love it and it's such a good addition to my collection. I really do use it all the time, every day, for any occasion. So yeah. Okay. So now I kind of want to just reflect on this, on my collection after going through everything, um, as we do in this series. So overall, I was pleased by the amount of foundation I have. I feel like I was a little nervous it was going to be excessive. Again, I say a lot in this series, excessive. Um, and obviously, I think 10 foundations is excessive for a single person who, you know, it's not like I'm making a ton of YouTube videos, making a living off of it. It's not like I'm a makeup artist. It's not like I do crazy fun makeup every day. I just enjoy it. Um, so it is excessive for sure, but it's not as bad as it could be. Um, so I, I'm not that upset with the amount I have. I think some things I want to change are the I have a couple things in my collection I don't really use. For example, the two Chanel. I don't need both. I want to compare and figure out if I even like any of them. Otherwise, I'll give them to my mom. The L'Oreal foundation, I need to, you know, make sure it's still good. Make sure it's still worthwhile. Um, but other than that, I think there's a lot of variety in it. Um, a lot of my foundations kind of do different things. Different formulas, different finishes, different times of year, what have you. And I don't think there's an excessive amount of like trying out products before I know if I like them. For example, you know the Revlon product is really the one I'm trying right now. And there's the other one is the sh um, the CoverGirl one. But I think it's nice that I kind of, you know, have one product I want to try. Kind of focusing on that. I think the CoverGirl one was a bit of an oopsie. But yeah, I think that's um, a positive. So I think there are ways to tone down this collection. If I, I really want to use the MAC face and body a bit more to mix. And I think maybe that can give, you know, maybe change some of the finishes of some of these foundations be kind of fun to work with. So that's another thing to keep in mind. But overall, I'm honestly not super like critical of this aspect of my collection. Um, I think I've found products I really enjoy and it's not like I'm in the hunt to keep finding amazing products. I think there are some gaps certainly, but for the most part I have a collection that can really encompass all my needs. So that feels good. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that's kind of my thoughts on this. I'm not super mad at myself. I think I'm going to get through a couple of these this year and I have plans to try out a potentially, you know, expired one. Double check that, maybe compare these two Chanel and CoverGirl ones, pick the one I want and otherwise it'll go to my mom who will use it. Um, but yeah, I feel pretty good about it. So yeah. Anyways, that was kind of my reflection on my foundation collection. Coming up next is going to be concealers and sort of setting sprays, setting powders. Um, so yeah, that's going to be coming next. I hope you guys are enjoying this series and kind of, you know, perhaps reflecting on your own collection. And yeah, I'm going to continue making these videos and hopefully it'll inspire me to be a bit more um, intelligent in my spending and consumption. But yeah, um, please feel free to like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Otherwise, I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye bye.